Hello everybody, this is Brian Martin. I know that some of you have seen some of my cards that are on display on the Play.com uh, community page on Facebook. And if uh, you'd like to make a card similar to the one you see there, or you want to give it some color, or you want to make multiple variations with different logos, or maybe you want to do an umpire, or a ballpark, or just a card for reference to who the pitching and hitting coaches and managers are for your game recaps, or you want to do a team card for a, a clear envelope or to put on a on the front of an envelope, you can do that. And the program that I'm using is Affinity Publisher. And what we're going to do is going to show you how you can start creating your own cards um, using the same size that is used by Keith Avalone and Play.com. Um, the 44 by 72 centimeter cards that are the size of the uh, History Maker baseball cards. Um, I like them because you can buy the the uh, actual small sized uh, individual card sleeves for them, and you can protect them. So if you were doing a fact deck, I would probably make them this size. Um, now that I know how to do that, I've been using Excel for years. So what we're going to do is I'm this is a, a file that's already been done and it's got a lot of things built into it and rather than go back and try and explain all this let's let's go in and, and do a brand new uh, file from the get-go so when you open X, uh, affinity publisher and of course this is going to now not respond because that's the way my life works um, starting when you open it up this is what you see um, you have to load a document. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, there are pages and master pages. Now I'm not familiar uh, with enough with the program to know the difference between a master page and a page other than a master page is one where you can say if I build it off of it, it brings in some pre-existing things to it. Um, maybe a grid, maybe some other stuff. I just haven't learned how to modify those. So we're just going to show you how to do a page and you can just keep adding pages to your to your document. So the first thing you do is you go to File, and you say New, and the program's going to, uh, it's a little older laptop, so it does get hung up, because this is a, I'm also running the uh, magna, magna, uh, recorder in the background, so. Um, different layouts here, you have, it's all listed in millimeters, there's, you can have some presets of your own that you've saved, you can, this is print, um, just to print, print ready would be for like a, uh, a photo um, to for professional printing that photo we're going to use print uh, the print version um, actually I'm going to use print ready um, and over here is your layout now for the purpose of this you say well it's an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper that's what I use that's fine um, DPI 300 most of these things we don't change but here's what you want to do you want to change the document units to millimeters because that's what the cards are going to be built in. So now your page goes to 215.9 millimeters to 279.4. Because everything's in millimeters, you want to keep it that way, and I'll show you why that's important in a minute. Orientation is uh, you want to make it landscape, so click the landscape button, and you'll notice that once you do that, the landscape is, it has a black background, so it shows it's active. Default master, I will just leave that alone because, again, I'm not familiar enough with master pages to know how to do that. This says facing pages. If you click this off, it will create one page at a time. Otherwise, it creates two facing pages though you're, as though you're doing um, a uh, magazine. I just want one page. So I'll click that off. Uh, you scroll down here. Don't worry about the color. Um, it, it's it, it's a color profile, and then the reason that's important is if it's print ready and you take it to a commercial printer, it will print in all the proper color shadings for a commercial print, whether that's Office Max on one of their color printers or, or to a regular or to actual commercial printer. Margins. Your margin on the left is 7.7 .7 millimeters. Your margin on the right is 7.7. .7 your top is zero, your bottom is zero. Because again, your top and your bottom when you're doing portrait and or landscape, you're talking about the tops of the cards. So you want the margins to be zero because you want there to be nothing at the bottom of the page that the, the page itself will be the edge of the card. No bleed. And then so once we click Create, and you have a chance to do a transparent background. Um, 
I'm, I don't click that because it's going to leave me with a white background. You'll notice now that the page comes up and there are two little guides here to show you where the margins are. Say, okay, Brian, that's great. How do I how do I lay this out? Well, uh, Affinity uh, Publisher has two things that will help you. The first thing is your uh, it has a select uh, a view uh, menu, and the view gives you multiple things you can look at. But we want to do uh, show the guides. I actually want to go to the guides manager. I'm sorry. There's a guides manager here. When you click on that, it's going to go column, columns, and the style is outline. You want, see how that at the bottom here, every time I click it, it's doing something different. And the columns are six, and the rows are three. The gutter is this space in between the cards. You want that to be zero. You can use the scroll bar here scroll it down or you can simply just type in zero it will automatically default to millimeters it keeps your margins it keeps your top and bottom don't worry about the spread origin just leave that there and then you close it and now look at that that's what your sheet looks like those guides will not print on the piece of paper you see them but they don't print and as we go through the process uh, in further steps, we'll show you how to create the actual grid lines for that and actually create an, a full grid that will allow you to, uh, to do those different things. Then under the select of uh, the view, there's also show grid. And what that does is it sets you up. Now, I have mine, you also need to learn about the grid and axis manager. This allows you to determine what the spacing is for the grid. You can do automatic, which means it will automatically determine what the spacing is. You can do basic. You can do an advanced, where it gets all, you can have tertiary axes and things like that. So if we go basic, and I say, I want the spacing. Notice how the spacing is 10 millimeters. And notice how these squares are huge. I just want There's a slider you can slide back and forth. But this is one where I want to click on there. So I double click and delete all this out. And I type in four. One, and we'll close this. And what that does, and I will show you how to zoom in on this, control equal. And we'll scroll. What that allows you now to do is have a card that is 11 squares across and 18 squares up and down and each one of these lines is four millimeters high so if you had a ruler and held it up you could see just how much of a space you have over four millimeters it's not a whole lot so a lot of the things that you do will be uh, done in eight millimeters etc so how do I begin I've got my grid I've got my layout but what we're going to do is we're going to set up these different things called assets. Everything you add to a card is an asset, and every asset can be added to this tab here called the Assets tab. And once you've created the asset, you can then bring it in and you have them for future projects. You'll see here I've got one called Baltimore. These are Baltimore cards. If I go to Assets 2, I now have for MasterCards different elements, and I'll show you. For example, here's the team front card and by just clicking and dragging on that element I can then drop it right into the existing card that I have and just nudging it a little bit you'll notice those blue lines show up and those blue lines are extremely important because they give you the centering And there'll be a green line that shows up every now and then that reminds you that you're centering in the middle of a page, but you get the idea. I don't want to use predefined assets. I want to construct assets of my own. So everything's a layer. So there's a layers tab, and you'll notice that there's a bunch of stuff here. It's, it's blank, but we're going to start um, by building the layers from top to the bottom of the card. So you can play with this. I played with it already, so I know exactly what I want to do. Um, 
Let me go back to my assets and I'll show you what I'm trying to do. I'm, gonna, I'm going to do my best to recreate, if I can find it, I'm going to do my best you know what we're gonna go back we're gonna do something different I want to go over to here and I want to go to my grid manager I go view grid and access manager I want my scaling to be two millimeters and I'll hit control equal sign again as I think what I did I think I yeah there we go so what I want to do is I want to recreate that card as best I can so I'm gonna try it I'm gonna drop that card right there just to show you and you'll notice in the layer it says it's the Cleveland card group and it appears as the first item what I do is I drag it and what I try to do is keep all of the elements then in play below this area in the order that they appear on the card. So let's let's do this first. This top element is a double uh, element. So the first thing is you need to put in a shape. Your shape tool is here and you have a bunch of different things to choose from. I'm choosing the rounded rectangle tool and I'm going to Draw that rectangle and I can use the handles and what I've done is I've given myself two millimeter space on either side and a two millimeter space from the top that looks kind of weird so I'm going to take that and I'm going to once that's activated I can continue to create those so I'll go over here to this little move tool and move that ever so slightly you'll see how that red line see how that red line appears it's more orange it tells me I'm centered right up against the image on the other card so it helps you keep in line with the other cards that are available so I've got it in, in the right spot I can now choose the color um, and the way I can do that is I can open this so we're gonna drag the rounded rectangle below Cleveland here and I can go into this Cleveland card group and there's a header group and there's there's a card header the rounded rectangle and I can go in and take a look at this fill And look at the RGB sliders, and I note that the RGB color is 47, 117, and 181. I'll write that down. And then I want to go into the font, which is the player name here. And I'm able to go here and find that this font color is 255, uh, 215, and 0. Those will be important in just a minute. First things first we format the, sh the shape. Rounded rectangle, here's the fill. The stroke is the line around the outside. So the fill we want, we come over here and normally it comes to this uh, where it says tint, just where it says color, choose RGB sliders, and you can type the numbers right in. 47, tab, 117, tab, 181, tab, and you'll notice that that blue color is that blue color. Now for the uh, stroke, there's none. But if I wanted to make this a color, let's say I want to make it the yellow color just for fun. I would do 255, 215, and zero. And if I really want it to stand out, this gives, tells me it's a, a, a two point line 
I click on that and I can say let's make it a point 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 eight and you can see right there there's a very thin yellow border around that on these cards with color that little bit of color is important only if it's important to you for me what I do is I go back to the element and I say for the stroke instead of a color I pick this little line here and where it appears that way it means the stroke is transparent or no color and you'll notice the line is missing so how do I put the name in there that's just that's just a that's just a shape well, one of the, what you do now is you do a text frame so click on this text frame tool you'll create a box and you want to create a box that starts right there at the intersection see right where that corner starts and I'm going to drag that all the way over to the same thing on the opposite and see how the box is inside and then I can type in and you'll notice that's black right now because I haven't done some things so I typed in the word player name I'm going to go over here and change the um, font to Arial condensed Arial Nova condensed because I like the way that font works um, right now it's 12 point we'll worry about that later I want the color that's there's see it's black so it's hard to see and that's where I type in my 255 215 whoops zero and you'll note that the player name is now that I'm going to re highlight that and over here is how you can justify it I'm going to justify it this is for centering so center it I'm going to bold it I'm going to italicize it as long as again as long as this is in with the T mode you can edit the text box so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to type in name in all caps because that's how we do it and this is a little big it's on 12 point so I'm going to knock that down a size down to 11 and I believe I have absolutely replicated that now this box is a little bigger than that box but that's okay we're we're just we're playing around with it so um, we've got that piece done so for now that's how you get the first element started and when you're done you'll notice that player name is here so I'm just going to click this and move it down and see what happens the player name disappears because this image round the rectangle is in front of this image how do we fix that well, if you move the image below the name, then you've taken care of it. But then it's not in the right order. So let me move this back up here. See the bar, how it's sort of a solid bar all the way across below Cleveland C right there? If I put that there, we're back to where we were. If I take player name and drag it up below, just up a little bit, watch the blue bar. See the blue bar? How it just appears, but it only goes over to the little T. That means that I've now made the player name subsumed into the rounded rectangle. It, it, I can still edit each thing individually, but now there this allows the player name to come in front. It's now part of the rectangle. When they're separate elements, then they become this thing of competing for who's in front. When I put one inside the other, it's considered to be all part of the same element, each part being editable. So that's our first demonstration, and we've got the player name in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick file, save as, and going to save. Um, well, let's, let's stop for a second before we do a file, save as. I want to make this an asset so I'm going to go to my assets thing and I'm going to create um, I can create uh, 
I can create a new asset where right here in this upper corner here say new create new category I'm gonna call it um, it's automatically calls itself assets for um, I'm gonna flip over there now and I'm gonna rename it and call it uh, training and one of the things I'm going to do is go back to my layers excuse me and I'm going to create my first asset by taking this rectangle clicking it holding the shift key clicking player name oh I don't have to do that they're subsumed into each other rounded rectangle I'm going to click that make sure it's highlighted blue I'm going to go over to assets and right here where it says training it's going to say add from selection add that selection and you'll notice that it says it shows me a little highlight of that asset what that means is now that I have that asset um, I'm going to call it uh, let's see what's well, right now called rounded rectangle I go back to my layers I'm going to double click this everything that has a little thing in parentheses can be named I'm going to call this Cleveland card header you can call it whatever you want the text element will be first and I'll put in caps last as a reminder that that's how I want to put that in there and then it puts the value that's in there so you can remember which one it is now that I have that my assets I'm going to take this I'm going to delete it and go back to layers and this one now that this has a name I'm going to highlight it go to assets and do add from selection and now it's called Cleveland card header why is this important well guess what I can do with this now I can just drag this element right over there and I can drag this element right over there and now I have that ready to go and I can make as many cards as I want by dragging the elements I could have multiple different headers where I could say you know um, I want the I want that this header but I want this particular look for the for something else and you can mix and match where you you like the way one part of your card works you like the way another part of it look a, a different card that you've designed looks if you keep them adding them to assets you can pull those elements and say let me make an all-star card that has all the design elements that I really like while allowing me to keep the old elements to, to create another set of cards so when we go to save this we're gonna do the old file save as and we're gonna call it um, affinity training we're gonna save it it's saved and then I can go to a view zoom and zoom to document and you'll see now that I have four cards out of 18 ready to lock and load that's training for now we'll post some more later talk to you soon